After leaving to Quant, we found an awesome hillside spot in Mont Franklin. We walked around the town and looked at the beautiful houses and wandered down the narrow streets. The weather seemed to be coming right, and summer was here. It was getting warmer with much less rain. After we had finished playing on the playground at nine o'clock, there was just enough light for us to walk up the road without falling over. We noticed that there were a few dead pigeons around, but we didn't mind. As we walked past the church, we peeked into the door and watched the choir sing some songs. This is a town called Montpezia. It's a Bastide town with a uh, wall, four to five set of walls around the village, and it was made in 1284. We found out Montpezia is a Bastide town, which is a town laid out with all the streets built in a grid pattern around the central square. We walked around the whole town and saw so many old houses. Dom is a town on the top of a hill and we walked up and around the town. There was a cool restaurant that had trees forming a shady canopy over the outdoor tables and a view that looked over the valley. When the sun was setting while we were walking along, it also lit up the restaurant. We continued the walk and drove to a spot where we shot our bows around. Three, two, one. No one hit the camera, did they? No. <laughs> She's so full of beans at, at night time, isn't she? She's just so full of beans. Ashley, go to sleep. Being mean to me, the world. Now, nah, I'm going to tell you about the world's <coughs> biggest world Amazon fish, the Alabama. Come on, time to wake up. Give me the grumpy face. We all bought ourselves bows and arrows. It's good to get them out when we buy a flat grassy patch and shoot them at a target. Oh, I got a, oh, I got better than I got a seven. We drove on narrow roads through the winding gorges with mossy cliffs towering above us. We arrived at Rockmandor to find a great campsite on a cliff and play games. I'm thinking Dylan. I'm Bob Dylan. I'm an archery trainer. <laughs> Originally, there was one small chapel in Rockmador, but when word spread that a miracle had happened, pilgrims started to go there. The money given by the pilgrims paid for the seven other churches surrounding the main square. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. Down there. Yeah, here's that? a stink view of some buses in the car park and some houses and some roofs and some kind of gorge. Look at that. We were driving through the gorges to Verdun, looking at the amazing scenery, when we saw a lady climbing a massive rock face in the drizzle. The night before, we had watched a documentary about a man doing the same thing with no ropes. Do you guys know where you are? No. Okay. Where are you guys? We're in Nimes. In Nimes. Front of a... 
What is it? Amphitheater. Amphitheater. Yeah, Roman amphitheater. Yeah. The first century. Yeah. The it was built to built to seat twenty four thousand people, and it was built by uh, Augustus, who I think was uh, one of Julius's sons. Oh, it's After a long drive, we parked up in Nimes for a look around. We walked five minutes and found the Les Arena, a mini coliseum that was built to hold 24,000 people. We thought about how much work went into a making a stadium that lasts 2,000 years. All of those thousands of tons of stone and no cranes or modern construction equipment. We moved through the town and came across a temple with marble columns that were very well preserved. Only the higher priests could pray in it. It's called the Mycen Curry and is one of the best pieces of Roman architecture because of its completeness. We walked back to the motorhome and drove a few minutes to a spot overlooking the city. After arriving in Orange, we parked next to the Trumphial Arch of Orange that was built by Emperor Augustus in 27 BC. We walked a street and up a hill to a beautiful view out of the town. Alcerla Sorg was an amazing town with so many paddle wheels. In the olden days, they were used to generate power for the paper mills. They were very old and had lots of riverweed growing on them. Fontaine de Vaucluse has 600 people occupying the town and was once called Vaucluse, or the Closed Valley. Scientists have found out there was human occupation there since the Neolithic times. The river in Fontaine de Vaucluse was once used by the Romans and Phoenicians to transport goods. Following some major discoveries from two cave dives by the SSFV has allowed more than 1,600 antique coins from the 1st century BC the 5th century AD to be brought back up to the surface. We pass through the endless fields of lavender and wheat as we approach Mostas Saint Marie across long straight flat roads. The town was built into the base of the cliffs and an amazing orange sunset was beaming it up. After a long day of driving the sun was setting and we were looking forward to finding a parking spot for the night. The stunningly placed town marked the western end of the gorgeous de Verdun. Yeah, problem. Problem, mm. he's sick. Why? Hello little fox. We were parked in a nice spot near a huge lake early in the morning and we were just about to start school. Dad opened the blinds to see a German jogger hiding behind our motorhome. It turned out he had been scared by a common red fox. They come down regularly from the mountains and hunt for food. The ranger turned up and gave the fox a croissant. He said they are a problem. Can I throw it to him? Yeah, throw it to him. After he left, we gave the fox a couple of pieces of bread. He'd take it away, eat it, then come back for more. We've just started our drive through the Gorges du Verdon. Looking down at the lake we parked to uh, last night, just to the right on that road there. It was a beautiful sight looking down at the river, winding through the Gorges du Verdon. It was mind-blowing seeing the amazing landscapes and looking down at the sheer cliffs beneath us at the viewpoints. We gazed at the vultures and eagles circling up above us. The canyon is about 25 kilometers long and 700 meters deep. It was gouged out by the Verdon River, which is named for its startling turquoise green color.
gorgeous de Verdun are full of roads that just suddenly drop off at the edges. Gorgeous de Verdun had some amazing dramatic views where we could look straight down the cliffside. We spent the day driving through the gorge and then found a nice place by the river and made some friends that were gypsies named Raphael and Anise. They had two dogs and we played guitar with them. Right, Matthew, what you got there? We got a baby viper snake. Got a baby viper, and how'd you get that? Well, one of our friends in a motorhome, um, Raphael, yeah, they're came over there in that motorhome over there. Found it, yeah. and it was dead. So he brought it over and showed us. Yeah, they us. found it down at the um, stream, didn't they? Yeah. And brought it over. Baby viper. First snake ever. Freaky. After being invited to the campfire for the night, we all took guitars down to the lake and had a play together. The gypsies were playing a really cool flamenco guitar and we played for about 10 minutes each time. Raphael gave us a fourth guitar so we can all play together. After a great night with the gypsies, we said goodbye and in exchange for the guitar, I gave them some strings. We left there and continued the drive towards Antibes. We said goodbye to our Spanish friends and drove through the gorgeous de Verton headed to Stephen and Pippa's house. We stopped off at Castle Lane and bought some baguettes to eat for lunch. It took us a while to find a patisserie but eventually we found one just down the end of the street. We ate them with egg and tomato before carrying on the drive to Stephen and Pippa's. We wound our way through mountains and had sleeps. We drove through many villages and then saw Antibes on the horizon.